How are you? Hello, Maggie. I am uh, doing all right. It's, uh, I don't know, this week feels full. I think as people are getting back into different things that we have kind of left for a while or haven't done as much, like things are really starting to pick up. Yeah, it feels, yeah, straight, like good. It's like a good full though. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, yeah, like doing stuff. People are moving, you know, things are happening, but it's a lot. Well, one of the things that I'm super excited to think about coming forward is the next class that we're offering on Sunday mornings. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Should we invite in the Reverend Doctor? We shall. There we Hello. go. Hello. The Hi. Reverend Doctor herself. <laughs> Indeed, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, again. Uh, Twice in my life. Souls for uh, soul cast viewers everywhere. Uh, this is a distinct honor for me. The second recorded call with the Reverend Dr. Ruth Myers in one day. Um, it's a personal record. <laughs> and, for me too. Uh, right, there you go. Uh, and Ruth, would you share with all Sozians near and far um, the conversation we had this morning? Yes. So we recorded a conversation that will be part of the upcoming adult formation series. Uh, the conversation is with the Right Reverend Eugene Sutton, who has been Bishop of Maryland since 2008. And that diocese last fall uh, adopted a resolution uh, creating a seed fund of a million dollars for reparations. And wow. so for a class on restorations and reparations, uh, he seemed like a really compelling speaker and he is indeed. It was a fascinating uh, uh, conversation and I look forward to sharing it all with all of you. I should not be surprised because I've heard Bishop Sutton speak about reparations before, but uh, this is somebody who's just so well versed um, from a just a personal perspective, a professional perspective. He has uh, testified in front of Congress. Um, he has been uh, interviewed uh, scores of times about this. Um, and this is just one of four folks who have yeah. so generously um, agreed to be with us. And this is the only one I think is, is Bishop Sutton, the only one that's pre-recorded. Bishop Sutton is the only one that's pre-recorded. The others are joining us live on Sunday mornings. So I am just really excited that I was able to reach out to these folks and they said, well, okay, we'll do this. Uh, it looks like you're doing some interesting work at All Souls and we'd like to be in conversation with you. For those All Soulsians who were on the sacred ground uh, call, uh, two of the people who were kind of holding and presenting as part of it, uh, the Reverend Stephanie Spellers and the Reverend Isaiah Shaniqua Brokenleg, um, from the presiding bishop staff, they're going to be guests with all souls in the months to come on this class on reparations and restorations. Yes. Um, yes. Ruth, for you, uh, as a human being and a Christian and a scholar, mm -hmm. why is it so important um, for you to teach and engage in this class? Um, because I think fundamentally of this vision of the loved community, um, and it's a vision that goes back to um, Josiah Royce and then through Howard Thurman and um, Martin Luther King and, um, and is talked about in the Episcopal Church now, but it is a vision of God calling us together. And in many ways, it's, um, it's a dream and a future oriented vision that we're uh, for the rest of our lives, I'm sure, and beyond are gonna be trying to figure out how to embody here. But I think it's the vision that God has given us. Um, that's God's desire for us as um, people who follow Jesus Christ. And so to be in conversation with people who can help us imagine what that is and begin to take some steps that might uh, more fully live with one another as a beloved community, that's what excites me and motivates me to do this work. Yeah, I, uh, I know that each of the four presenters over the course of the class, which I should say uh, May 2nd, May 16th, May 23rd, May 30th, we'll take a break on the 9th when Bishop Mark is here with us. Um, uh, at least the experience I had of talking with you and Michael and Bishop Sutton was this sense of like, whenever somebody speaks of like a real deep truth, that resonates in your body and you just know 
oh, that's how I want to live. That that's the the right relationship that I that I know about, but I have not yet been able to experience. Um, that's the feeling I had in speaking this morning with the two of you and Bishop Sutton. It's like, yes, that that's it. That's what I want to orient my life towards. Well, and we should say, because we have, the one speaker we have not named yet is our lead speaker this Sunday, um, who is uh, the Reverend Dr. Michael Battle from General Theological Seminary. He has a broad experience in both South Africa and the United States. He's worked very closely with Desmond Tutu and has written about Tutu's life and has done lots and lots of work on questions of reconciliation. So I was just so excited when Michael said, Yes, I will do this. I have a question for both of you. What is your hope that um, it, all Solzians will get out of this class? I would hope that all Solzians would come close to that deep truth, that that vision of God's desire for us as children of God and would um, help us begin together to imagine what is the work we can and need to do as all Solzians here in this place. Our context is really different than Bishop Sutton's context, and yet we have a shared history in the Episcopal Church. And so how do we build on the work that we're doing? So I would hope that all Solzians would find uh, themselves inspired and their imaginations kindled. All that. That's exactly it. <laughs> uh, I share that 100%. And uh, the only thing I think I would add is, uh, or everything we need is right here. Uh, the relationships we have, the, the, the people, the spirit, everything is here. And so part of the conversation with Bishop Sutton, uh, I have this real hope that we can work really closely with St. Paul AME, uh, our friends and neighbors that we've been in conversation with for a couple of years around some of this. and. Um, I just feel like the possibility is here. And so what Ruth said about the dream being cast or the vision being shown, uh, I want all soul scenes to be able to see that and to feel like um, uh, there are things, there are active, practical, real steps that we as a community can take and we as individuals can partake in that will change us and our church and hopefully our community and out into the world. One of the things that's been helpful for me in preparing for this is uh, working with some of the leadership of, with the team particularly who's working on the follow-up to Sacred Ground, but also with the Peace and Justice team, is looking back at what we have done already at All Souls. And it's really pretty amazing. Uh, we wanted to have some background material for speakers so they had a little bit of a sense of who is All Souls. We didn't just sort of wake up in 2020 um, after the murder of George Floyd and say, oh, we have to do something. We've been on this journey for a while. Uh, we're gonna be on it uh, for a long, long time. Uh, so building on uh, what we, where we've been, um, I think is also important for us to remember. Well, thank you, Ruth, um, thank you. again. And I look forward to seeing you and uh, Michael and uh, this uh, coming Sunday, uh, Professor Brattle and others in the weeks to come. Uh, so also the 1010, Sunday mornings coming to a screen near you. Uh, you'll find the Zoom link on our website and all of these courses will also be recorded. So if you miss one, you can always pick up and join in the conversation. Yeah, and if you wanna know more about the speakers ahead of time, the, there are small bios on the uh, adult formation page and they're also available on Google. I think all the people here are Googleable, so. Totally. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on this whole cast. This was fun. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks Ruth. Bye. Bye now. I'm super pumped about this class. I can't wait to see it. I am too. I, there are so many avenues or paths out of this that I can see and I'm excited for. Um, and so this is, as, as, and I think it was important to hear Ruth say, this is the next step. We've had steps before and we have many steps to come, but this is the next one. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so Maggie. Yeah. What's on tap? Okay, well, we had a rain out last Sunday of a few things. Another thing that got rained out last week was youth group. So we have, because we're so close to the end of the year and I wanna make sure that we fit in all the meetings that we um, 
are meant to have, we're going to reschedule for this week and we're going to have two weeks in a row. So we'll have a meeting this Sunday at three o'clock in the courtyard. And then the following Sunday, we'll have another meeting three o'clock in the courtyard. Uh, so another thing on tap that also has to do with Sundays is our bishop is coming to visit and Bishop Mark Henley Andrews. So he vis visits us about every three years. It just so happens that this is the time he's coming to visit. Um, and so we know he'll be with us. We're still trying to figure out how that will be. So for like the 1115 uh, live streaming with us um, and for the nine o'clock, we're still trying to figure out what that will look like. So all Solzians, you'll know more uh, in the week to come. Um, and then at 1010, this will definitely be a digital thing. He will be in conversation with our four folks who have been a part of Confirm Not Conform for the last couple of years. Uh, and so it's Eleanor and Emma and Pearl and Jasper. And so uh, this will be an opportunity for all Solzians to participate in the support of our youth who are taking steps towards confirmation. A couple weeks following that, uh, we do have permission now to meet in person. And so the 1115, <laughs> Woo! will be in person and it will be in uh, the church upstairs and we are working out right now all the myriad logistics. It will happen and you can sign up today. Contact tracing and it helps us um, making sure that we don't exceed our capacity which for the indoor service Phil is 50%. Awesome. Uh, I'm excited. Just so excited for what what is we're going to be able to do. And I know it's going to be different. Um, you, you've spoken before about how we're not going back to what was. Um, you're not going to experience all souls pre-pandemic mm -hmm. uh, because we're different now. We all individually and communally are different. But I do think that the essence of who we've been, what in uh, past years has been called our secret sauce, um, still is here. And I think really the secret sauce is how we love on each other in the spirit. Is there anything else coming up? Yeah, but I think it's probably for today. Uh, the 23rd will be uh, also uh, Emily Hansen Kern's first Sunday back. Woo! Great. We're super glad that Emily is on sabbatical right now and we'll be super glad when Emily uh, returns. And so that, that will be okay. that Sunday as well. Um, Can't wait. Yes. Live and in person, not too far away. All right. Goodbye for now. Yeah. Also, we love you and we cannot wait to see you in person.